Hey, Shalom, Israel, Mosai, and Christ bless. My name is Captain Mattathias. And I'm Officer Losias. All right, this is another 15 minutes with the captains. All right, today's topic is the Big Bang Theory and carbon dating. Mm. All right, let's get right into it. Give me uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20. Come on. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. What's committed to uh, Timothy's trust right here? The Holy Scriptures, all right? The Bible from uh, Genesis on down, on up. Read on. Avoiding profane and vain babblings mm -hmm. and oppositions of science falsely so-called. Meaning uh, oppositions of science falsely so-called. Meaning they will come other forms of knowledge that would be contrary to the Bible, all right? So the, the commandment was that, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, was uh, stood the test of time, all right? Do me a favor, play that clip. The universe is everything, from the tiniest particles to the largest galaxies to the very existence of space, time, and life. But how did it all begin? The origin of the universe is the origin of everything. Multiple scientific theories, plus creation myths from around the world, have tried to explain its mysterious genesis. However, the most widely accepted explanation is the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory states that the universe began as a hot and infinitely dense point. Only a few millimeters wide, it was similar to a supercharged black hole. About 13.7 billion years ago, this tiny singularity violently exploded. And it is from this explosion, this bang, that all matter, energy, space, and time were created. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11 and verse 17. All right, going into this uh, so-called Big Bang Theory. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11 and verse 17. Come on. For thy almighty hand that made the world of matter without form. Wait a second. Wait a second. Read that again. For thy almighty hand that made the world of matter. Of matter. You hear that in science. Mm, All right. Adams. The Bible says that the almighty God is the one who formed the world of what? Of matter without form. Meaning what? It wasn't in that circular spear shape yet. All right? The, um, the universe as we know it was not formed just yet. Okay? Now from there, uh, go to verse 22. Verse 22. Come on. For the whole world before thee is as a little grain of the balance. Mm -hmm. Yea, as a drop of the morning dew. That followed down upon the earth. Right, because the Most High, he dwells in the heavens and he looks down on the earth. Now, watch this. Uh, they say the Big Bang Theory, you know, all these things just came out of nowhere and boom. All right, watch this. Give me Second Ezra chapter 6 and I want verse 38. Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 38. Come on. And I said, O Lord, thou spakest from the beginning of the creation. Thou spakest from when? The beginning of the creation. Right, the creation of the heavens and the earth. Come on. Even the first day, and say it thus, let heaven and earth be made, and thy word was a perfect work. Right, and it says thy word was a perfect work. Jump down to verse 43. Come on. Verse 43. For as soon as thy word went forth, the work was made. That's boom. That's the bang. As soon as he said it, Instant. it happened instantly. Okay. Now, let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Let me get there with you. All right. Uh, Isaiah chapter 40, and I want verse 18. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 18. Come on. To whom then will ye liken God? All right. So now how are you going to compare? Who are you going to compare God to? You can't compare him to nobody. nobody. As we just read, he's the creator of everything. And he did it in an instant. Read it again. To whom then will ye liken God? Come on. Or what likeness will you compare unto him? Mm -hmm. Do me a favor. Jump down to verse 21. Verse 21. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Mm -hmm. Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? Right, before the earth was even created, the foundations of the earth. Come on. 
It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Right. It's not nobody. They always try to give credit to somebody else. Sometimes they say Mother Nature. They say science or whatever it may be. It's nobody else but God. Come on. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. And we that, just read that in um, Wisdom of Solomon. Right. All right. Come on. That stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Come on. That bringeth the princes to nothing. It says that bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Right. They're vain. Who are the judges of the earth? Remember, the earth was given to the hands of the wicked. Right. These judges of the earth, they have done what? They have said and came up with their sciences and their beliefs and whatever it may be that God had nothing to do with the creation. That it was just this big boom. They can't explain it. Happened 13.7 uh, million years ago, and the, uh, and the earth has only been here for 6,000 right. years. Blast We're going to read about that, too. Read that verse again. Verse 23, that bringeth the princes to nothing. Right. When, it, when you read these scriptures, it cuts all of those belief systems. It just shreds all of them. Right. Brings them to naught. Come on. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. As vanity. Read. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither. And the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. Meaning what? Their, that belief system is only going to be here for so long. Right. All right, drop that and jump down to verse 28. Verse 28. Come on. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Right, the creator of the ends of the earth, come on. Fainteth not. But when it comes to the Most High God, he fainteth not. Mm. You understand? That science is going to fail, but the Most High is not going to fail. Finish that out. Neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. There's no way to come up with a science to explain the creation. You understand? There's, there's nothing you could do. All you could do is read the Bible and what? We're going to know in part. But right. when Christ comes, he's going he gonna to teach us everything later. Oh, praise okay? All right, drop that. Let's go to the book of Acts 17. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 17. And let's start at verse, um, let's start at verse 22. Acts 17 and verse 22. Come on. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars hills and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. All right, so this, these are our forefathers, all right? Athens, which is in Greece, these are the Hellenized Jews. Mm -hmm. So he's speaking to his brothers and saying, y'all too superstitious. That's a lot of our brothers today. They like to go toe, uh, toe for toe with us in the scriptures, right. holding on to Esau's signs. It's like, bro, where did you learn that from? They, they say, the Bible's false. I'm like, well, you had to learn what you learned from a book too, right? Exactly. Arthur. You understand? They're going off into things that have nothing to do with the scriptures, but they hold on strong to those things. Read on. Verse 23. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this in inscription. Let's see what the inscription says. To the unknown God. To the what? Unknown God. So even those atheists, even those believers in science, they know that it has to be some power Who's doing all of this? It has to be. You have to say, but right here, instead of admitting that it's the one true God, they say to the unknown God. Mm. Read. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Because if you're not worshiping the one true God, you're automatically by default worshiping the devil. Right. Read. Him declare I unto you. Read on. God that made the world and all things therein. Right. So Paul says, hey, I got to declare the truth to you. All right. Read it again. God that made the world and all things therein. Come on. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Going into what? He's, he's not a, um, he's not going to be an idol. Like it's, it's going to explain it. Come on. Neither is worship with men's hands. Come on. As though he needed anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Right. He giveth life to all things. Not just, um, not just man. But to the plants, you understand, to the animals, to all of these things. Um, give me the book of Three Holy Children. Uh, and I want to start at verse 38 because we just touched about him giving life unto all things. Okay? Three Holy Children. And I want you to start at verse 38. Read that. This is Three Holy Children, verse 38. Come on. O all ye waters that be above the heaven, bless ye the Lord. 
It says, all ye waters that be above the heaven, bless ye the Lord. Come on. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Mm -hmm. O all ye powers of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. And that's innumerable. There's so many things that give life, that have uh, life and breath in them on the earth. It says all of these things, they do what? Bless the Lord. They praise the Lord because he made them. Uh, read verse 39 again. Verse 39. Come on. O all ye powers of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Come on. O ye sun and moon, mm -hmm. bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. It says even the sun and the moon, he created that as well. Come on. O ye stars of heaven, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Mm -hmm. Every O every shower and dew, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Jump down to 45. Verse 45. O ye winter and summer. So what is he showing? He created everything. He created all the seasons. He created the planets, the universe. Jump down to verse 47. Verse 47. Come on. O ye nights and days. Come on. Bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Read. O ye light and darkness. Bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Jump to 50. Verse 50. Come on. O ye frost and snow, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Verse 54. Verse 54. O all ye things that grow on the earth, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Forever. Showing you what he created all things by his word. And as soon as he said it, Boom, it all came to existence, all right? Now, let's go to, what's the book? The uh, Cradle of Civilization, uh, Time Life Books. Uh, read that for me real quick because we have to understand, like we saw in the video earlier, where this, uh, you know, they say things are millions and billion right. of years old. How, where did they get that from? All right, read what you got. This is Cradle of Civilization, page 17. The main reason the peoples of Mesopotamia remained forgotten for so long was that they, unlike the Egyptians and other ancient empire builders, had not built an enduring stone, but in mud brick. Rain, annual floods of shifting sands slowly leveled the bricks and buried the towers and palaces. Right. So Mesopotamia, when you read Genesis, like Ur of the Chaldees, that's going into uh, southern Mesopotamia. So it's talking about that particular landmass. So it's saying in comparison to Egypt, it's saying the things that they used to build their houses and their monuments, it didn't last over time, like the uh, relics and, um, you know, the ar architecture of Egypt lasted. Okay. Read on. Leaving only shapeless mounds. For thousands of years, no one was aware of the secrets of these mounds concealed. Mm -hmm. But in the middle of the 19th century, French, German, and English archaeologists. There you go. Uh, who is that? Y your friendly neighborhood white, white man. man. 19th century. Thousands of years later, just some white folks, they come up with this epiphany. Read. In the 19th century, French, German, and English archaeologists started to explore them. All right. Go to that, uh, go to that article, uh, acs.org. This is acs.org. In 1946, William Libby proposed an innovative method for dating organic materials by measuring their content of carbon-14, a newly discovered radioactive isotope of carbon, known as radiocarbon dating. This method provides objective age estimates for carbon-based objects. Age what? Carbon age estimates. Age estimates. It didn't say it's the exact. It says it's estimate. estimate. All right, read on. Estimates for carbon-based objects that originated from living organisms. The radiocarbon revolution made possible by Libby's discovery greatly benefited the fields of archaeology and geology by allowing practitioners to develop more precise historical chronological across geographic and cultures. Right. So this, it said right there in the text that it benefited archaeologists. All right, now let's go back to the Cradle of Civilization. I want you to read uh, that passage on page 23. Cradle of Civilization, page 23. Uncovering and charting the, the strata of history. A basic aim of archaeology is to establish the chronology of a site. To do this, excavators determine where each layer of structure, representing a historical period, 
begins and ends, then mark off these levels. Now, jump, jump down. After a level is defined, excavators try to determine its age by studying the evidence in it. They, they do what? They try to determine its age by studying the evidence in it. So all we got to do is what? All we got to do is read because they're telling us mm. this is an estimate and they're trying to date it properly. But they didn't say that it was what? A definite thing. These are all estimates. These are man-made estimates. Right. Read on. Once one object has been dated, archaeologists can usually assume that other objects in the level were made at that same time. You see that all of this is assumptions and estimates. Mm. So let's get back to the scriptures. Let's go through a quick timeline of the Bible. All right. When you read the book of Genesis, the fifth chapter, it does what? It gives you the chron chronology of from Adam to Noah, all right, which is approximately... 1,556 years, all right? Then when you read Genesis 10 and verse 11, that's going to give you the time from Shem to Abraham, and that's approximately about 400 to 500 year gap, which gets us to 20, I'm sorry, 2000 or 2100 BC. Now, uh, right here in the Bible Atlas, if we uh, zoom in on this, this shows us that the patriarch Abraham was on the earth approximately, what, 2100 B.C., okay, 2100 B.C., and it counts down from that point. So that tells us what? From Adam unto Christ, that's approximately 4,000 years. Approximately 4,000 years from Christ to present day, approximately 2,000 years in total, that's 6,000 years. Right. So that's showing you what? The whole carbon dating with this, uh, these what, archaeologists, Going into the Big Bang Theory, they're saying that that was 13 million or a billion years ago. Oh, it's all false. Phony. Give me that in uh, Isaiah 34 and 16 real quick. Isaiah 34 and verse 16. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16. Read that. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Come on. No one of these shall fail. It says no one of these, meaning nothing in the Bible shall fail. Nothing. It's 15 with the, the minutes with the captain, so I'm not going to add up Genesis 5, Genesis 10 and 11, but right. that's what it is. It says all the things in the Bible, that's all we need. Is that it on that? No one of these shall fail. Come on. None shall want her mate. It don't matter about all the other scientific books. Right. The Bible says no other book can make with this Bible. Come on. For my mouth it hath commanded, mm -hmm. and his spirit it hath gathered them. Right. By his spirit is going to gather the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. All right. From there, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And I want verses 3 and 4 because y'all have to understand why these other uh, sciences and other ways of thinking are out there. They're to do what? To turn us away from the one true God. Mm. Read what you got. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2 and verse 3. Come on. Let no man deceive you by any means. By any means. It don't matter if even if you were, uh, grew up in their uh, educational system. Right. Read. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Come on. And that man of sin be revealed. Right. And that's what we're seeing today with the, uh, the careless murders of our people. All right, all of the things that are chalked up against the children of God. But most importantly, it's saying, don't be deceived by any man, okay, going into the return of Christ. Watch this, verse 4. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God. And that's what we want right there. Because this man of sin, when they say the French, the German, mm. whoever, the English, English yeah. yeah, these particular men, read that again. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God. Right. That's what they do. They exalt and are in total, in complete opposition of the one true God. Right. Anything that's contrary to this Bible, you got to throw it out. Last scripture, give me Isaiah 29 and verse 16. Isaiah 29 and 16. Read that. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 16. Come on. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Right. Their philosophies, their sciences, their doctrines, it will be esteemed as the potter's clay. Meaning what? It's going to get crumbled. Mm. Like it said in Isaiah 40, it's going to fade, fade away. Read. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not. You see that thing? By saying there's a such thing as the Big Bang Theory... That is the thing that was created saying that the creator did not make him. Mm. 
Read. Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it? He had no understanding. So that's what they're saying. They're saying, you know what? We know more than God. But today, they've been found a liar. Right. All right. Once again, I'm Captain Mattathias. I'm Officer Losias. All right. And this has been 15 Minutes with the Captains. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.